Showtime exclusive actress Niecy Nash Betts and her wife Jessica Betts opening up about their relationship, their love, and is it as good as it seems? So I got to talk about this social media because yes. everyone tunes in to see you serenading together, cooking together. Do they? Yes, they do. <laughs> the thing that though surprised me, you posted about your trip around the world recently where you went to Maui, Bora Bora. Look at them, look at this. The vacations oh. from Dream. And then, I know, <laughs> y'all have so much fun. And you can tell it's not that Instagram life, that it's real life. But then you posted that you wanted to make love on every continent. You said, I want to make love around the world. All around the world. I'm already in the Mile High Club. I want to run naked. <laughs> I run around. Why not? Um, this pledge, ma'am, where does this... You see, you've always been authentic. We did something at Essence Festival talking about childhood and the influence yes. of mothers and our lives and needing to feel love as a child so that you can give love. I saw this. I was like, is it a new hurt? Was this always... How do you describe? People think that I'm different now. Like, uh, like say, you, you seem so different. You seem so happy. I've always been a lover. We've both been loved before. But there is something to be said for being loved properly, um, without conditions. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, and it's like when you show someone your true self, here are my bullet holes, my stab wounds, my childhood pain, and they still say, come on, I see it, come on. Can I tell you something? I, as I told you, I've always admired you and just loved how your career trajectory, I mean, the range of your acting is incredible from the most heartfelt performances, Selma, When They See Us, to the fun of Reno. The range is incomparable. I instantly saw a lightness in you now versus when I saw you at Essence Festival. Your energy is lighter. Um, I'm happy. Yeah. I'm happy. You know, you could, you, could, you could put on any fashion in the world. Nothing is going to look better on you than happiness. Happiness. Yeah, yeah it's not. Got me goosebumps. Okay, so on y'all's merry road to happiness, yes. there are a few stops you had to make. Yeah. Nisi, you have three children. Yes. What, uh, Dominic is 30. Yep. Danielle, Danielle is 27. And Dia, Dia your twin, is 23. <laughs> and then, Jessica, you have a grandmother who's a pastor. Yes. So you got to make these stops on love on the love train. Yep. Yeah, we had to stop and let like let everybody know. Yeah. What was going on? So we stopped and I, I got to meet her grandmother yes. before she passed. She got to meet my grandmother before she passed. Wow. So we had to just go and let the matriarchs of the family get a load of it, mm -hmm. you know. And sometimes mm -hmm. they old school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're very much like, now, wait a minute. <laughs> and then yeah. after you're, like, around us for, like, 10 minutes, you're like, yeah. I get it. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. get it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Who was more nervous, Jessica, you or Nisi, about those stops that you had to make to share the love with the people most important, which are the family and Nisi's kids? I believe we both had uh, a certain amount of, of nervousness within us, but... You know, my grandmother's a pastor. She's she's God fearing. She not only was uh, the pastor of the church, but she owned the church, wow. and she owned the land that the church was built on. Wow. So she was it was her life, you know. So, you know, when I took Nisi home to meet her, she instantly fell in love with her, wow. and she said, "Well, you know, you you know what God says." And I said, "Yes." Yeah. She said, "Does she make you happy?" And I said, "Yes." Yeah. She said, "Well, you have my blessing." Wow. Yeah. And I think my grandmother liked Jessica better than me. <laughs> <laughs> you know she did. She you did. know she did. Be honest. She, she did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she did. I know that Dia, your youngest, really wanted you to label things. Like, because we talk so much about LGBT, LGBTQ+, plus, um, binary, non-binary, and I know people were asking, well, what is Nisi Nash? Is she bisexual? You were getting these questions. Mm -hmm. How did you discuss it with the kids who were trying to understand? My daughter was like, you know, how do you identify? And I said, huh? Yeah. And she said, well, how do you identify? I said, as black and your mama? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, no. <laughs> you, gotta, <laughs> you gotta know, mom. And she made me she made me watch a show all about with all the labels and all the names, and after it was over, my head was spinning. And she was like, okay, so which one are you? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, girl, I, I'm more confused now than I was before this. I don't know. I said, if I have to coin it in the moment, 
I would say I'm just sexual oh. because I don't know. I've never looked at anyone, male or female, and seen them the way I see her. Yeah. So I don't know, but right now I know I'm happy. I said, write that down. Write that down. If you want. <laughs> But it thrusts you into this um, inspirational role within the community because now you're on the cover of Essence magazine. In the 52 years of this iconic magazine, they've never had a same-sex couple. So there you are, Jessica. You're, you're navigating love, but now people look at you as leaders yeah. in the community. How do you balance that when it's no labels? How, how did you take on that? Representation matters, and people want to see themselves. And, you know, you don't want to hide the fact that there are same-sex couples and there are same-sex relationships. So representation matters, and it's, it's, it's life-changing for, for not only just us, but for everyone who can identify and relate. But we didn't see it coming. You did not? No, no, no. First of all, we didn't see any of it coming. You've been in Hollywood for so long. You've been out. You, you didn't, you just were like, oh my gosh, they responded. I just don't, I, I, I don't know. I just not didn't think people, <laughs> people would care that much where I lay my head. Hmm. You know? And it's like when that happened, that became a thing. And then when we did the cover, it became a thing. But when we were freezing on top of a building to get this picture. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we look calm and cool and collective, but the behind the scenes... You were on a building? We were on top of a building that was supposed to be a closed set. It was more people running around than you could shake a stick at. And I was trying to... We was trying to cover our kibbles and bits, right. and I was like... <laughs> and then this one gonna look at me and was like, we look good, let's go. <laughs> and so we were like... <laughs> Coming up, Nisi and Jessica share how their partnership has transformed both of their careers and how choosing this love has Jessica singing a new song. A special performance. Don't miss it. We'll be right back. You helped a lot of people, Daddy. I know. I need you to be considerate of that. I will. I promise. Okay. Two ground rules. One, that badge and that gun must be taken off before you enter. Because in my house, you're my daughter, not an FBI agent. Okay. And what's the second rule? Bring home dinner once a week. Local restaurants only. <laughs> Look, you get that money from the FBI, you need to give some of it back to the people. And are you sure that's about the community and not about your belly? <laughs> I'm part of the community. Hmm? And so are you. Nisi Nash Vest and rock and soul musician Jessica Vest sharing their professional journey, their personal. Y'all work a lot. How do you balance all this Bora Bora love making around the world with all these shows and music? Well, we try to find places where our art intersects. Mm -hmm. So when I was hosting Don't Forget the Lyrics, Jessica was in the band. We got to go to work together every day. <laughs> Um, we try to find different spaces and places. Um, I directed a music video for her. Jessica actually plays my first lover in, in, in Rookie, Rookie Fez. Fez. Yeah. And Rookie Fez. it was interesting. And here's what people will think. Oh, she just put her on TV. Actually, I did not. Yeah. Um, she had done a short film and some other things that people saw on my job. And they came to me and oh. said, how would you feel about it? And I said, huh? And I was like, well, I'm okay, but let me ask her if she's okay. Yeah. And I came home and I said, would you like to be my first love? And she said, I want to be your only lover. <laughs> and I said, well, <laughs> you are my only lover, but I'm talking about Simone. <laughs> okay. So, Jessica, you married an actress. Yes. She has impersonated you 500 times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is your Niecy Nash? Show me your Niecy Nash, Beth. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> the Rookie Feds is a spinoff. So, Simone's got her own show. Yeah. And now we're following her journey as well. What is it like playing this character? Because I know that... I, what, somewhere like less than 1% of the federal officers are black women. Are black women, less than 1%. And so I'm happy to shine a light on them, but in a very full way. And my girlfriends call me all the time and go, I know you're not sitting over there with them tight pants on and that sassy makeup trying to fight crime. I said, well, how can you do it if you're not cute? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Simone dates men and women. 
Which is huge for this character, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, she does what now? <laughs> You're like, I've never played a character like that before. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm in. It's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. But it was a good time. And my favorite times were when Jessica got to work on set because those episodes were just so rich and so full. And it was so funny because we would be on set just doing whatever we do in between takes. And you look up and everybody on set is like, like doing what we're doing. We can't stop staring at you guys. Because you just have this rhythm, speaking of. I didn't know you were a child musician. Like you started out boys to men at 16 years old, yeah. moving up, you got Missy Elliott's attention. I mean, and, and I have full disclosure, I have friends who are like, she can sing. Yeah. And it's, it, it's. Yeah. When did you know you could sing? How old were you? Uh, in church, when I was like nine years old, you know, yeah. yeah. And so gospel music was my first genre, and and my grandmother was just like, just get up there and sing, you know? And that's when I, and I knew, and then that one time, um, I was watching The Box, remember when uh, we had the floor model televisions? Yeah. And Whitney Houston came on the screen, and I was, and I, and, and I started crying. I was like 10 years old, and I started crying, and I was like, why am I crying? I didn't know what she was singing about, you know, mm. that kind of love at least. I love my mom, I love my grandma, but <laughs> I knew then I said, that's that's what I want to do. Yeah. 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 And Lucy, for you, I, I, you directed the music video. I directed one of her music yeah. videos, the most recent one, most uh, recent We Drip. One. This was a first for you, so both of you are inspiring the other to step out of these boxes. Yeah. And Absolutely. so you did it directing the video. Yeah, you know, I I like telling people what to do. I was but, about to say. <laughs> but, but some people don't like you telling them what to do. Oh. Um. <laughs> uh-huh. What can, uh -huh. she's like Steven Spielberging it or yes. Ava DuVernay in yes, it, I should yes, say. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. you were like, I'm like okay. I, I should stand, st stand here. She's like, no, you're gonna stand over there. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you're like, yes, yes, yes. So you got the new show, new music, and this new clothing line. Oh, we do. You know, yes. we did put a line. Of, somebody said, they got clothes? We yep. do. <laughs> bets of both worlds. Okay. Yeah, bets of both worlds. A little play on our yeah. last names, but um, Jessica would say certain There's things. There's Jessica in the... Yeah, I call... You kept calling her my wife, but I call Jessica my husband. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, I call her my husband. So some of our sayings, some of the things we say, we ended up just putting them on a on a shirt because we saw people in social media repeating us, quoting us. Yeah. So we was like, oh, well, let's just make a line so that they could just carry it with them. And you, you know, know what, that's so funny. Her husband, my, our team told me that and I was like, okay, she'll reveal that. Do you, is it, is it bothersome when somebody says wife or you No, like, I'm, you, I know that that's what first comes to mind. Right. But when I look at her, it's not what first comes to my mind. Mm. You know what I mean? Husband. Husband. Yeah. And Cora and husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do next together? We want to find another place where our art intersects. Absolutely. Something for us to do. Um, we're working on a documentary right now. Um, we'll tell you more about I that I was going to say, uh, ears open. I'll what tell is you it? more about that later, but us together, for us, it feels like magic. Yeah. And when I first met Jessica, she would always tell me, leave room in your life for magic. 